Good morning, and welcome to the French Protestant Huguenot Church. If you are visiting with us today, can everyone hear me? Yes. Um, we would appreciate it if you would um, fill out the red booklets in your pew so we have record of your presence. Um, we are happy to welcome you this third Sunday in Lent, during Lent. Um, there are many announcements in the bulletin. The flowers on the altar today are given to the glory of God with prayers for world peace by Catherine Fleming. Everyone is invited to a collation after today's service. Um, we appreciate everyone who volunteers their time and cooking talents to make this um, an ongoing part of church fellowship. It's entirely dependent on our congregation and we're very grateful for everyone's contributions. Um, our sympathy goes out to the family and friends of John Hertz Warren III, who passed away uh, last Monday. The memorial service will be held graveside at Magnolia Cemetery today at 2 p.m. Um, a tour of the church will be given directly after this service. If you'd like to do that, um, you would just come down front and someone will give you a very informative tour. Uh, finally, our um, tours, our annual spring tours start this week, um, they were, we didn't do many of them during COVID and it's good to be doing them again. continues on page three of our liturgies. Let us pray. O Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we have come together for the public sanctification of this Lord's Day to offer unto Thee our praises and our prayers and to hear Thy holy word. Thou hast promised to hearken favorably unto all those who call upon Thee in the name of Thy Son. We therefore beseech Thee to look down upon us in mercy and to purify our thoughts and affections that we may render unto thee an acceptable service. Great God, we humble ourselves before thee. We adore thy majesty, we extol thy wisdom, thy power, and thy goodness, which appear with such brightness in the marvelous works of creation and redemption. We acknowledge thy tender love and the manifold favors, spiritual and temporal, which we continually receive at thy hand. But we praise thee more especially with all Christians who are assembled this day, that thou didst send thy Son into the world to save us, and that he rose from the dead for our justification. We bless thee that thou hast given us by his glorious resurrection so lively a hope of everlasting life. O God, thy glory is great in all thy churches, and the praise of thy name is heard in all the assemblies of thy saints. May our thanksgivings ascend unto thy throne. Make us worthy to be partakers of the resurrection of the just and of the glory of the kingdom of heaven, whither Jesus Christ hath entered as our forerunner, where he liveth and reigneth, where he is adored and glorified with thee and the Holy Ghost. God bless forever. Amen. Will you please stand as we sing hymn number 230.
worship continues on page five of our liturgies. Here with reverence the Ten Commandments of the law of God as they are written in the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hear also what our Lord Jesus Christ saith in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Dearly beloved, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore humbly confess our sins. You may be seated. O Lord God, eternal and almighty Father, we confess before thy divine majesty that we are miserable sinners, born in corruption and iniquity, prone to evil, and of ourselves incapable of any good. We acknowledge that we transgress in various ways thy holy commandments, so that we draw down on ourselves through thy righteous judgment, condemnation, and death. We are, O Lord, under heartfelt sorrow for having offended Thee, and we implore Thy grace to relieve our wretchedness. Vouchsafe, O most gracious God and merciful Father, to have compassion on us. In the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, pardon our sins, give us the graces of the Holy Spirit, and increase them day by day to the end that heartily acknowledging our unworthiness and forsaking our sins, we may be filled with that godly sorrow which worketh repentance unto salvation and may bring forth fruits of righteousness acceptable to thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. New Testament reading today comes from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. 
And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Here ends the reading. We'll sing hymn 281. Our first second lesson comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verses 6 through 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their forefathers to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. We have one more reading today from the book of Isaiah. It is but one verse, chapter 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Here ends the reading. continues on page 10 of the liturgy. O Lord, let thy mercy shine upon us. O God, may clean our hearts within us. O Lord God, we render thanks unto thee that thou hast called us to the knowledge and profession of the Christian faith. We beseech thee to preserve and increase it in us to the end that continuing steadfast in the same, we may sincerely unite in the confession of the Church Universal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Ghost and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. He went into the place of departed spirits. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe the Holy Church universal, the communion of saints, the remission of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, creator and father of the human race, who has commanded that prayer and supplication be made for all people, we offer unto thee our intercessions for the peace of the world and for the happiness and salvation of all. Deliver, we beseech thee, O Lord, from spiritual blindness, all the nations that still sit in darkness. Thou didst so love the world that thou gavest thine only Son to die as a propitiation, not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Thou hast taught us that he came to be a light unto the Gentiles and to bring salvation to the ends of the earth, that there is none other name under heaven given among humankind whereby we may be saved. Grant, O almighty God and merciful Father, that all people may be gathered unto the name of our Lord, to the end that all nations may know and adore thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. O God of mercy, have pity on those who are suffering by war, pestilence, and any other scourge, and on all who are in affliction. We commend to thy care the widow and the orphan, the poor and the stranger, all who are in peril by land or by water or by air, all who endure persecution for the gospel, all who are distressed in mind, the infirm, the sick, and the dying. Lord, today we pray for all those in the Ukraine battlefield. We pray for those who are fighting for freedom. We thank you for the brave and courageous acts that are being done. We pray for the families, the refugees. We thank you for all those who are coming to their aid. We pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to comfort those wherever they might be. We offer our prayers for the family of John Warren III. Please comfort them this day and in the days ahead. We also give you thanks for your work in the life of baby Francis. Please help the little baby to grow strong. Comfort and relieve all of these according to thy several to their several necessities and give them a happy issue out of all their trials and afflictions and now o lord hear our silent prayers favorably hear us o god Graciously hear all who have at this time offered up their prayers unto thee. Reject not the supplications of thy servants, but grant us the blessings we have asked of thee and all others which are necessary for us through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we offer up our prayers. Amen. Our sermon hymn is number 420 in the supplement, Have Thine Own Way, Lord.
almost hard for me to believe, but it's the truth. I've stood where I'm standing now almost 40 years. And I don't remember really what I said six months ago. And I've received a lot of phone calls in 40 years, and I don't remember most of them. But some of them I cannot forget. Some of them are calls, the person calling me was wishing they didn't have to call me. On Monday morning of this week, I received such a call. And this is the way it went. Good morning, Phil. This is a call that you wish that you didn't have to receive. And then this person went on to say, Johnny Warren was hurt badly in a bicycle accident yesterday, last Sunday. He was found unconscious on the road. He has not regained consciousness. He's in ICU. He's on a ventilator. His neck is broken. Johnny Warren died Monday afternoon. And as you read in your program this morning, his funeral will be this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Johnny Warren was born here in Charleston. His daddy was a doctor, may even have delivered some of you who are sitting in this room or who are watching um, in your homes. He devoted his life to this city to make this place not just an asphalt jungle, but a people garden. Whether it was his devotion to Roper Hospital, Middleton Hunt, Charleston Historic Foundation, the Charleston Symphony, Spoleto Festival, College of Charleston alumni, being a lawyer's lawyer, being a great husband and a great father and grandfather. In his thoughtfulness, he did something good for his family and for me. He took the time to write down what he did not want and what he wanted for his service. It might sound morbid. He had no idea when his time would come, but let's face it, all of us, our time will come eventually. Let's do our families a favor and do the same. This is what Johnny wrote down. Graveside service, 23rd Psalm, concerto and two violins, Navy hymn, St. Patrick's hymn, no homily, no eulogy, and do it in 22 minutes. In graveyards and cemeteries throughout this city, you walk out in our graveyard, go to St. Philip's, go to the Circular Church, you will find mostly this, the name of the person, the date they were born, and the date they died. But in some cemeteries, maybe not as old as ours, you'll find this, the name of the person, the date they were born, then a dash, and then the date they died. I like to think that we're living in the dash. And all of us, you don't have to be like myself, like Charlie, like Woody, to get these calls that you never forget. You can be a daughter, you can be a mother, you can be a brother, a father, a friend, any of us that live long enough, we know the shock. We know how it just changes our lives. As we live in this dash, could it be that there's some people that have lived before us that can give us a hint when we get these calls, when we suffer these losses, how to make every day a day that we celebrate.
just maybe there's a lesson here. Maybe there's someone. Most of us here have never heard of a man named Glenn Cunningham. Glenn Cunningham was born in a place that I never heard of, Atlanta, Kansas. His family moved to Elkhart, Kansas. He was only eight years old, and he and his brother, who was 13, went to school in a one-room schoolhouse. His brother, who was 13, had this job to get the old pot stove warmed up so the classroom would be warm when the other students came. One morning, they did what was their duty. The brother thought he had a can of kerosene, turned out to be a can of gasoline, and he put it in the fire, and it blew up, and he burned to death and was killed on the spot. Young Glenn, eight years old, his knees, the skin was burned off of him. All of his toes on his left foot was burned. And every day, somebody had to call his parents or go to his parents' house and tell them what had happened. The parents came to the hospital. The doctor said, look, we need to amputate his legs. Every day, every day. And the parents would say, just one more day. just one more day and this went on for about a month and finally the doctors realized that there's no need to tell these parents you got to amputate his legs because they're going to say just one more day for two years he was in rehab did not walk till he was 10 years old finally walked in 1919 slowly and someone asked him said how did, you, how did you deal with this? One leg now is shorter than another. You've lost all your toes on your left foot. You couldn't walk. He said, someone gave me a Bible. And I read that verse from Isaiah 40, verse 31, where it says, you've got to wait on the Lord, and you can walk and not faint. And I read that verse every day. Glenn Cunningham continued walking, continued running. And in 1935, he started running in the Olympics. In 1935, he had the fastest mile that had ever been run, just over four minutes. He went on to get a master's and a Ph.D. from New York University, went on to teach at Cornell College in Iowa, went on back to Elkhart, Kansas, started a camp, and he and his wife helped 10,000 young people, abused and disabled young people. That's how you live in the dash. But sometimes it takes a spiritual base to get through the hard times and these phone calls that we get. I like what Amy Carmichael said because I can sure identify because I am not a genius. I'm not that gifted. I'm certainly not musically talented. I certainly can't run a mile in four minutes, probably about four hours. (laughs) And sometimes when you're the way I am, it will get you down. It will really get you depressed. But Amy Carmichael said, this is what you got to remember. One step at a time, one minute at a time, one day at a time, and just keep going. That's how you live in the dash. Glenn Cunningham would have appreciated Winston Churchill, and his name is being mentioned quite a bit here lately as the president of Ukraine is sometimes called. He's like Churchill for his country. Churchill went to the school and he was a total failure. But he went on because he would not quit. And he was invited to go back to his school and maybe you heard this story before. And the headmaster said, you're about to hear one of the most 
wonderful men that's ever lived. He went to school here. He's distinguished himself in our country. He, you're going to hear the greatest speech you'll ever hear in your life. Churchill got up and said, never give up. He paused and he said, never, never, never give up. And he sat down. Maybe that's the way you live in the dash. Amen.